Number 10, Molly Brown House. Molly Brown was known for being an explorer and adventurer, and her adventure led her to end up as a passenger on the Titanic. She was one of only a small number who managed to escape the tragedy alive, getting away on lifeboat number 6. She was known as the heroine of the Titanic, as she tried to get their lifeboat to turn back and find more survivors, and even got the first class passengers to donate money to the less fortunate who had lost everything in the event. She then returned to her home in Denver where she lived for years until she finally passed away in 1932. Brown and her separated husband and mother apparently still remain in the home, haunting it to this day. Visitors say that they can often see the figures of the three in various different rooms throughout the house. Furniture will be moved and rearranged and this most commonly occurs in the room that used to be their daughters. The house now serves as a museum and if you're interested, you can visit it to this day. Number 9. Woodburn Mansion the Woodburn Mansion is located in Dover, Delaware and was built back in 1790. It is often known for its purchasing in 1965 to be the residence of the governor, but others know it for its history of ghostly appearances. The first ghost was sighted in the home around 25 years after it was built. The two owners at the time were entertaining a preacher, and when they sat down for dinner he asked if they shouldn't be waiting for the other guest before they start their meal. But the owners explained that there was no other guest. But the preacher described a man he had seen in the home that matched the exact description of one of the owner's fathers. The ghost of her father had also been seen by other guests over the years. People now say that the ghost of a little girl will also often appear, and if you leave out a glass of wine, it will be drank by the spirits of revolutionary soldiers. Number 8. Bell Witch Farm the Bell Witch is known for being one of the most well documented supernatural stories ever. A woman named Kate Batts was neighbors with John Bell, who lived on the Bell Farm. They were feuding neighbors because she believed that he had cheated her out of some land in a deal, and on her deathbed she vowed to haunt the Bell family and farm forever. For the next three years, they experienced very strange things happening. They would hear voices speaking into their ears, see strange animals like a dog with a rabbit's head, and John's daughter would even suffer from physical attacks that would leave her unconscious. Eventually, John died, and a vial with a strange liquid was found beside his bed. The Bell Witch was held responsible for his death, marking the first time in history that a death would ever be officially recognized as being caused by the supernatural. Through their website, you can book overnight tours of the property and for some reason also book some river tubing while you're you're at it. Number 7. The Mackenzie House The Mackenzie House is located in Toronto and is known for being the home of the city's first ever mayor, William Mackenzie. He moved to the home in 1859 and died only two years later, leaving behind his wife and a total of 14 children. The home was empty for a while until renovations began in the 1940s to turn the property into a museum. That was when people started reporting the ghost of the Mackenzie House. It was apparently a long haired woman who even reportedly slapped a caretaker across the face. There were also many more reports of the ghost of William Mackenzie himself haunting the house, being spotted many different times over the decades. Other reports include a tall dark figure that watches guests sleep, footsteps steps creaking through the hall and the sound of piano music. The house was successfully turned into a museum and is open for anybody to visit. Number 6. La Lorie House The La Lorie House was famously reimagined in American Horror Story Coven, Kathy Bates playing Madame Delphine La Lorie. The woman was a real life socialite turned serial killer. She had a chamber in her home where she would dispose of her victims between 1831 and 1834, but responders to a fire would eventually uncover her dark secret. Her victims apparently continue to haunt the property to this day, unable to rest because of how they died tragically. Pedestrians can apparently hear shouting, moaning, and crying coming from the home, some people even saying that they can see faces looking out into the street from the windows. Despite its history, the house has managed to maintain a place on the market, even being owned by Nicolas Cage until 2009, and it's now apparently owned by a wealthy oil tycoon. Number 5. Franklin Castle 
Franklin Castle is known as one of the most haunted destinations in Ohio, having been built in 1865 for the Tiedman family. Over the next few years, various different tragedies would take place. Four of the family members died, and the father apparently had a hidden passage inside the home where he killed another member of his family and his mistress. Since then, those who have been inside the castle cite various different paranormal experiences and strange occurrences. In the tower window, there is apparently a woman in black who will stand there looking out at passersby. There are also reports of crying children, doors flying off hinges, and lights spinning. You can also apparently hear footsteps inside the home, even if you're alone, and if you leave something on a floor or a table, it will be moved to a different spot. Human remains were also once found inside the home in the 1970s, though it was never confirmed whether or not they were real. Number 4. Joshua Ward House the Joshua Ward House was built in Salem in 1784, Salem being known as one of the most haunted cities in the world due to the witch trials that took place there. The home was built by Joshua Ward on property that was first owned by George Corwin, the High Sheriff of Salem during the trials. He was responsible for all of the deaths that came as a result, and there were even rumors that he would lure those accused of being witches to his home and would inflict cruelty on them before their trial. Many times after a witch was found guilty, George would go to their home and steal their belongings, an action that would eventually end up with him being arrested. After he died, he was buried in the basement of the home and as a result apparently haunts it to this day. People report the feeling of being choked, apparently by George's spirit. And there are two others that haunt the home, Giles Corey, a man who was found guilty as being a warlock, and another unnamed which. Number 3. The Myrtles Plantation The Myrtles Plantation in St. Francisville is said to be one of the creepiest places in the South and is even called one of the most haunted houses in America. The house was built in 1797, and since then apparently dozens of deaths have occurred in a variety of different ways, including illness, poisoning, and attacks. Visitors and those who have lived in the home have reported many strange events taking place within the house. A few of the reported paranormal events include jewelry disappearing, furniture moving on its own, a grand piano playing itself, mysterious handprints, disappearing objects, and seeing former house residents standing standing behind you in mirrors. In the 70s, when it was purchased by the Myers family, there were numerous reports and even photos of the spirit of a young girl haunting the property. Now it stands as a bed and breakfast, popular with those chasing the paranormal, and you can receive tours late at night. Number 2. The Winchester Mystery House This one is probably the most popular and well known on this list. The Winchester Mystery House was built in San Jose, California, and is said to be haunted by the ghosts of everyone who was killed by a Winchester weapon. Sarah Winchester lived in the home after the death of her husband, the founder, and was tormented by the spirits of everyone who had died, so she started adding rooms to the home to make room for and confuse the restless spirits. Over time, the home became a labyrinth with many confusing features, including halls to nowhere, cut off staircases, and sloping floors. The house now apparently has 10,000 windows, 2,000 doors, 47 fireplaces, 40 staircases, 13 bathrooms, and 9 kitchens. Sarah Winchester died in 1922, and the home is now host to tours for anyone who wishes to go in search of evidence of the many ghosts within the walls. Number 1. The Whaley House in the year 1852, a man named James Robinson, also known as Yankee Jim, was sentenced to death for the crime of grand larceny or theft. Years later, a couple named Thomas and Anna Whaley built a house on the exact spot where Yankee Jim had passed away. As a result, the home apparently became haunted by his restless spirit. His footsteps were apparently able to be heard throughout the house. As years went on, though, more ghosts came to inhabit the property, including Mr. And Mrs. Whaley after they had passed away, along with their dog. All their ghosts have been reported as being sighted within the home. The sightings and paranormal events apparently became so overwhelming that in the 1960s, the US Commerce Department classed the house as officially haunted. It is now a museum that offers nighttime tours to those who are interested in potentially catching a glimpse of the ghosts. Number 10. 
Nakagasuku Hotel. In 1975, a World Fair was planned to be held on the island of Okinawa, commemorating the American return of the island to Japan three years prior. Located on the Motobu Peninsula, this was a high-profile event to be sure, and one businessman from the capital of Naha saw a great opportunity for profit. The businessman chose to build the hotel with an excellent view of the Pacific Ocean and East Chinese Sea, and however, construction was immediately hindered by warnings from monks that the land they were building on was supposedly the home to a great deal of sacred locations and burial grounds. These warnings were ignored, but as accidents during construction began to increase, progress was halted as the workers began to fear that the build itself was cursed. In an attempt to encourage the workers to return to their jobs, the businessman made a show of living on the premises until the project was finished. Three nights later, the man lost his mind and disappeared. Here. Do you think that you could stay for more than three days? It's pretty beautiful, so long as you don't mind the angry ghosts and demons. Number 10. The Lizzie Borden House A bed and breakfast located at 232nd Street is home to one of America's most haunted and mysterious homes. The Lizzie Borden House gets its reputation from the unsolved murder of Lizzie Borden in 1892. She's one of the most infamous true crime figures known for killing her father and stepmother with a hatchet. There's a, a twisted rhyme about this incident, but I'm not gonna sing it here. I'm not getting cursed on YouTube. So on August August 4th, 1892, Lizzie's stepmother of 27 years was struck 19 times while her father, Andrew, was hit 11. Although Lizzie Borden was acquitted and found not guilty, the dark history draws in crowds every night for its nightly tour of the premises. The Lizzie Borden room, the infamous room where these horrors took place, is requested the most for paranormal overnighters. Some 1408 stuff, would you? do this? Who does this? And it's not like you can just, you know, enjoy a lovely all-inclusive breakfast, but uh, there's also the nightly house ghost tour, the uh, ghost hunt, and all of that, which attracts fans of horrors every night of the year. Number 8. The Chu Mansion When Chu Jinshan and Chu Wei King moved to Shanghai, they did what anyone would do with a suddenly gained fortune. Build a big old house smack dab in the middle of Shanghai and threw a bunch of animals inside. And not just any old animals, they kept tigers, crocodiles, and peacocks on the property, building a massive garden for their captive creatures to prowl. Their decadence was unmatched in the entire city, which makes their sudden disappearance all the more mysterious. The animals were sold off or eaten, and half of the mansion was converted into a middle school during World War II. However, in 2002, the land was bought to make way for a commercial complex. During this time, a nurse by the name of Lee Fei claimed that she'd had to treat several construction workers for what were described as bite wounds. The workers recovered, but they were too terrified to return to the site. Later, several blogs described an attack in the area, as a mason attacked his manager with a hammer, claiming that lizards were making him do it. Then, only a month later, a woman living near the building claimed to see a dragon along the arm of one of the construction cranes. And if that wasn't enough, on several forums, employees of a hotel across the street from the building claimed to see ghostly animals leering in the distance. So yes, you could knock on that door. Just make sure you get your hand back. Number 7. The Haunted Ballroom Ah, now we're talking. This is one I for sure would want to check out. I would definitely moonwalk in a haunted ballroom. The house, if you want to call it that, is a mansion slash castle that was built between 1871 and 1887 for a New Zealand politician, William Larnack. Like any other Disney castle, you have about a 3,000 square foot ballroom. Larnack gave his 21 year old daughter a ballroom for her birthday. Here you go, Kate, and now, you know, go make a friend or two. Good luck. What would you want a ballroom for? It's just the worst gift. What happened to ponies? Well, Kate, sadly, passed away due to uh, typhoid cancer, but the death doesn't get in the way for her. Apparently, the spirit of the youngster is still said to haunt the ballroom. Number 6. Luang Sewu Designed by Cosman Citroen, Luang Sewu, which translates to a thousand doors, was the center of operations for the NIS, the first railway company in the Dutch East Indies. The complex is a collection of four small buildings and was 
a fairly beautiful, if nondescript, building when the Japanese army invaded in 1942. Under their command, the building was converted into a brutal dungeon where all manners of horrific war crimes were carried out by the Japanese imperialist forces. Retaken by the Indonesian army, the complex fell into disrepair, its white paint beginning to crumble and the facade falling away to a much more sinister disposition. Legends began to circulate of the ghosts of decapitated prisoners searching for their heads, and a vampiric mother resurrected to prey upon the living, making her nest in the rafters. All of this meant that these thousand doors would have trouble opening for any business other than historical preservation. In that case, do you think you'd be willing to knock on one of them? Number 5. Edinburgh Castle In Scotland's capital city, I I've been there a handful of times, and it's one of my favorite places to visit. It's uh, got a nice little castle, uh, this uh, Edinburgh Castle. Of course, you have to visit it every time that you go. It's, it's a real calf workout. Uh, some of these parts are just chilling. You can really feel the haunt in the air. And these rooms date back to more than 900 years, so the walls have seen a few fortnights. Uh, sightings of colonial prisoners from the American Revolutionary War are common, so that's terrifying. As well as French prisoners from the Seven Years' War. If you're thinking about visiting, perhaps the ghost of the wandering dog in the castle's cemetery will convince you to stay a night. Number 4. Leap Castle Going from Scotland to Ireland, the ancient history of Ireland is steeped in blood, and there's no better place which better exemplifies this than Leap Castle. Constructed between the 13th and 15th centuries, the castle was originally known as Leap of the O'Bannons. Subject to the O'Carroll clan, a number of power struggles were had as various groups attempted to vie for the castle. Two brothers of the O'Carroll clan turned on one another, and in an event that would be known as the Bloody Chapel, one would slay the other in the middle of a service, running him through with a sword in front of their family. Later, it would be passed on to the Darby family. Now, Mildred Darby would frequently hold seances in the castle, leading to the stone walls becoming home to all manners of ghosts, spirits, and worse, a reputation. Some of these ghosts included the Red Lady, who stalked through the halls with a dagger, and two youths, one who fell from the battlements, and the other still looking for her sister. Number 3. Ram Inn Also doubling as a functioning pub located in England, the inn has been owned and operated by many folks since the 1100s. The ancient Ram Inn has been investigated by years of paranormal researchers. Shows like Ghost Adventures, Most Haunted, you name it. They've all done paranormal research at the ancient Ram Inn. And by research, I mean they just kind of stood around for a bit in the dark and taking notes. I could never do that, and legend has it that the energy from Stonehenge apparently feeds the property's paranormal power. Not to mention, the backyard is also home to a 5,000 year old pagan burial ground. Stonehenge Stonehenge feeding power, I mean that's one way to save on your electricity bill. Number 2. The Poveglia Island Asylum Ah, Poveglia, a lovely little island just outside of the city of Venice. Well, good luck getting there, because it's completely closed to the public. Fairly unnoticed until 1776, the Madristro alla Sanita took control of the island, using it as a checkpoint for seafaring goods headed to the city proper. If you remember your Euro history class, you probably know where this is going. In 1793, the island was was turned into a massive quarantine zone for the bubonic plague. What buildings did remain were then transformed into an asylum for the insane in the 1920s. Apparently, even with a doctor that supposedly experimented on their patients' brains before leaping from the building's tower in 1930, driven mad by the ghosts of his victims. The asylum was open for about 44 years before it was closed in 68. Well, there have been attempts to reopen the island as a park, none have really been successful, but honestly, I, I think I'd rather just not go trick-or-treating in that neighborhood. It kinda sounds like a rough part of town. Number 1. The Queen Anne Brick Mansion Heading over to Georgia for this haunted mansion. When I say mansion, I mean Hounting of Hill House type mansion, not quite a, like a Will Smith mansion. You know, in Savannah's Columbia Square, the Queen Anne Brick Mansion was initially built in 1892 for William and Anne Kehoe and their 10 kids. After a few deaths took place in the house, the building was converted into a bed and breakfast, and since 1992, guests have reported hearing footsteps and 
sounds of kids playing. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Ramsey home. Okay, so what would you say if someone told you that they bought the home where a horrific and one of the most prolific crimes of all time happened? And then what if I told you that they went to sell it years later but decided against it because they just loved the home so much? I mean, I get it, but I don't. You know? This is what happened when Timothy and Carol Schuller Milner bought the Jean Benet Ramsey home in 2004 after it had sat vacant since the terrible crime happened in 1996. The 7,000 square foot home was built in 1926 and after their 2004 purchase, the couple tried listing and selling the home at a price point of 2.3 million in 2008, 2009, and again in 2011, and once again in 2014 but at a lower price of 1.95 million, but surprisingly, no one wanted to buy it, I wonder why. Now the home is unavailable for purchase, but not because it was snatched up by someone, but because Carol and Timothy turned down all of the offers because they just love the house so, so much. Number nine, the Amityville Horror House. Now I understand that when you found your dream home, absolutely nothing could change your mind. But if someone had ended their entire family's lives in it about a year before they'd moved in, I'd probably have some serious reservations. Well that's the DeFeo house. More famously known for serving as the backdrop to the real life case for the Amityville horror series of movies after a brutal slaying from Ronald DeFeo. The family that moved in, the Lutz family, believed that they were getting such a good deal for their new home that they were not going to be deterred solely because one of America's grisliest crimes had occurred in it. They paid $80,000 for a 4,000 square foot house and you know what, gotta be honest, with those savings, I'll let the ghosts eat dinner with me. Unfortunately for the Lutz family, the house ended up being more than they could bear. And after only a month of living there, they moved out after reporting a number of hauntings, from green slime running down the walls to spectral apparitions and being rudely awoken every night at 3.15, the exact time the original family died. It eventually got to be too much for the Lutzes, who moved out. In our number 8 spot today, we have Raynham Hall. Raynham Hall is located in England, and it was built around 1620, and it is a large building on 7,000 acres, which is obviously quite impressive. The tale that follows this haunted building is that of Lady Dorothy, or Dolly Townsend, and her husband Viscount Turnip Townsend. I can't believe a couple with the nicknames Dolly and Turnip have an evil history, but unfortunately they do. The story goes that Turnip kept Dolly locked up in the house, which is obviously just terrible and very cruel. After her passing, it's no wonder she decided to stick around and haunt this house. Apparently there was a photo taken of her ghost in 1930, and it is said that no one has ever been able to to prove it was fake, so all you photo experts out there, take a look and let me know what you think. Despite these haunting tales, however, it is said that the Raynham family still chooses to reside here. Number 7, The Ackley House now who's to say that all ghosts have to be pestering little poltergeists? According to the matriarch of the Ackley family, one Helen Ackley, the ghosts who live with her at the Ackley house in New York have been nothing but friendly to her. It all started when her husband, George Ackley, saw what he described as a pair of disembodied moccasins walking across the floor. Then the daughter complained that there was something that would shake her bed at night, every night, until one day she just asked it politely to stop, and then it did. Who knew if you just talk to the ghosts and just sit down and hash out their problems, you can come to a mutual understanding. From here, the Ackleys reported living friendly with their new roommates. Interestingly, the Ackley house led to the naming of one of the funniest named cases in legal history, the Ghostbusters ruling. Although the Ackleys were aware that the house was haunted when they bought it, and they liked it, when they sold the house, they did not mention the paranormal elements to the new buyers, who claimed they would not have bought it had they known. Meaning the new family were allowed to pull out but only if they told the judge that they ain't afraid of no ghost. In our number 6 spot today we have The Conjuring House. For this one we are taking a look at the home that was the background for one of the most famous Ed and Lorraine Warren cases of all time, as well as the setting for the first Conjuring movie. This house, which was built in 1736, wasn't anything special and didn't really gain its fame until the family of Roger and Carolyn Perron moved in in 1971. They claimed to experience terrible things, like the smell of rotting flesh, witnessing something levitating in their 
their beds as they slept, and one of the family members even claimed to have been possessed by a spirit. The family of course called Ed and Lorraine to come and investigate and hopefully help them out. Once there, the pair claimed that there was in fact a spirit haunting the home, and it was that of Bathsheba Sherman who was said to have been a witch who previously lived in the house and who was buried in the cemetery nearby. The story was sensational, and despite its modern fame thanks to the movie franchise, in 2019, Corey and Jennifer Heinzen still decided to buy it and open its doors to paranormal investigators from all over the world. As of this year, however, rumor has it that the estate has a new owner, a Boston developer with a deep belief in the paranormal by the name of Jacqueline Nunez. It is reported that she was prepared to go to great lengths to get the home as well, as it is claimed that she paid around $1.525 million for the haunted house, which is about 27% higher than the asking price of $1.2 million. Number 5. The Los Feliz Mansion the Los Feliz Mansion was the happy home of one Dr. Harold Perelson and his family. A picturesque old house in the heart of LA. At least it was, until one night, something changed in Perelson. And he saw fit to try and slay his whole family with a ball peen hammer. Normal doctor stuff. Tragically, he fatally struck his wife, but luckily his children managed to escape. He himself chose to drink acid instead of facing the police, leaving behind on the bedside table a haunting excerpt from Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy. It's said that the spirits of the late doctor and his wife were still trapped inside the house, unable to leave from their violent final resting place. Two years later, the house was purchased by the Enriquez family, who knew all about what had transpired earlier and was interested in the property, but not as a home, electing it to use it solely as a storage unit instead. It makes sense. Ghosts never possess inanimate old scary objects when they're left to their own devices. Never. They continued to use it as a storage facility no problem, but come 2016, the house was put up for market again, and suddenly no one was interested whatsoever. The Enriquez family could not find a buyer. The Enriquez family offered this piece of advice for anyone who wanted to buy the haunted house looking for a good deal. Just say a prayer every morning and every night. Maybe get some other stuff too, maybe a ring of salt, maybe a rosary, I don't know. In our number 4 spot today we have the Sally House. The Sally House is a haunted house that is located in Atchison, Kansas. The house was built in the mid 1800s, but its haunting history started when a doctor purchased the home. The doctor had his office in the front room of the home and he lived upstairs with his family. One day a mother brought her daughter named Sally to the doctor and it was there that she was diagnosed with appendicitis. The doctor claimed that there was no time to wait and began performing surgery on her right Right then and there, even before the sedation had set in. Sally ended up passing away, which is obviously very terrible and sad, but despite these stories of the home's history, it didn't stop renters Tony and Deborah Pickman from residing in this home in the mid 1990s. After they began living here, the story of this haunting gained a lot more attention, however, because they began experiencing some really strange occurrences. These occurrences ranged from strange voices to clear burnt finger marks on candles that had been mysteriously lit, all the way to actual attacks made on Tony. This led to extensive investigations being done by a Kansas paranormal group who found that Sally was haunting the house, but surprisingly she wasn't the only one. There was another spirit of a middle aged woman who was apparently the one who was behind the more aggressive and frightening attacks. Now the house is open for self guided tours as well as special overnight visits for those who dare. Number 3. The White House Yeah, you heard me right. And don't worry, I'm, I'm not going for any sort of political metaphors here. I'm not smart enough for that kind of commentary. I fell off way too many Razor scooters as a kid. The White House has been home to a lot more than the seat of the American government, as it's home to a number of ghost sightings, including the ghost of the great emancipator himself, Abraham Lincoln, as well as his son, Willie Lincoln. Several presidents over the years have reported seeing strange and unusual sightings around 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. A White House spokesman said he definitely believes in ghosts because if he didn't, he would be calling eight presidents a liar. The first president to ever report a ghost sighting was Lincoln himself, who said he would see his late son Willie at the foot of the bed, something his wife would also corroborate. After his assassination, political leaders all over would report seeing Lincoln at times of great need in the country. Churchill claims he once stepped out of the bath, embarrassed to see Lincoln standing in front of him. Abe is one of the most reported ghosts the visitors claim to see at the White House. Reagan once claimed that his dogs would follow him in every single room of the White House, but refused to go inside Lincoln's old bedroom, and would instead just bark at the door. 
In our number two spot today, we have the Dahmer home. Jeffrey Dahmer is, of course, one of the most terrifying and prolific serial killers ever, which is exactly why it doesn't come as a surprise that his home, the one where some of his very first crimes were carried out, was a bit of a tough sell. Yeah. Turns out most people don't want it. How strange. PETA, of all companies, was going to use the property to convert it into a vegan restaurant, but because of zoning issues, that never happened, so they needed to look for someone else to purchase the property instead, and that ended up being Chris Butler, the rock musician from Waitresses. According to Chris, when he first viewed the home, he had no idea the dark history behind it. He was really intrigued in it because it is surrounded by woods, and as a rock musician, looking for somewhere you can make as much noise as you want without bothering anybody is ideal. When you think of a serial killer owning it prior, that thought immediately gives you chills. In the end, he says he went with the house because he really liked it, and it's not like it's the house's fault for the atrocities Jeffrey committed, which, I mean, is fair. He also doesn't believe in ghosts, so he doesn't worry on that front. According to him, the only thing he really worries about in the home is all the people stopping by who want a tour, like they're entitled to it. And coming in at the number one spot is the LaLaurie Mansion. 1140 Royal Street in New Orleans looks gorgeous on the outside, but on the inside is home to a storied history of horror. The house was first sold in 1838 to a seemingly well-meaning couple, one Dr. Leonard Louis Nicholas LaLaurie and his wife Delphine LaLaurie. Seemingly well-meaning being the key term here. For starters, they were slave owners, and Delphine treated them horrifyingly. She would put them through all kinds of physical torment. Two of the people she had enslaved jumped to their death rather than ever have to face any more of her. In the attic above the kitchen, she kept people chained up, bodies broken, eyes gouged out, kept alive solely for the purpose of inflicting as much cruelty as humanly possible. Delphine fled the mansion behind, and the house laid in a state of ruin and disarray for years, eventually finding its way into the hands of a national treasure hunter, one Nicholas Cage. Yep. That one, like the guy from Face Off. Cage said, I bought it in 2007 because I figured it'd be a good place to write the great American horror novel. I uh, didn't get too far with that one. It was said that the house had been haunted with such violent energy still residing in its walls. Only a guy like the Ghost Rider 2 star Nick Cage would see that and think it sounds inviting. Wild at Heart star Mr. Cage only stayed there for a few years, eventually moving on from the LaLaurie Mansion in 2009, leaving it behind where it now operates as a tourist destination. And no word if he's made any more progress on that great American horror novel or not. Getting unscared in at number 10 is John Soden and his house in Los Angeles. It's time to brace yourselves because this story is pretty dark. Back on January 15th in 1947, a woman's body was found on this lot. Her murder became one of the most reported murders of the time because of the gruesome way in which her body had been found. She was surgically cut in half from the waist down, washed, cleaned, and posed by her killer. Residents who have since lived there have reported hearing strange noises, such as the dragging of heavy chains, heavy footsteps, and voices calling their name. It's actually a really nice looking house, but it is full of negative energy, and it is also believed that anyone who steps foot in this house will be cursed. So, you know what? I'm good at just admiring the architecture from like, Google Maps. I don't even have to see it in real life. The Queen Mary ship creeps onto this list at number 9. I had to include this one on this list because people technically did live on this ship and it is referred to as one of the most haunted ships in America. It was operated since the 1930s but now it is permanently docked in Long Beach, California and it is used as a hotel. As nice as this might sound, while guests on board will often experience sleepless nights, there have been a bunch of scary paranormal activities reported on this ship. Guests will say that they will hear a creepy kid laughing in the middle of the night or things will be flown across the room and room B340 has been taken out of rotation after there's been numerous violent poltergeist activities. It's actually impossible to keep someone in that room for the entire night because they will just get scared away. For me, I would probably last um, a minute. Probably not even that long. Up next, number eight, we have the Stanley Warehouse. This is a notorious haunted house that has a long reputation of being one of the most haunted places in Orange County. One of the most talked about frightening ghosts that live here is the previous owner. During her golden year, she was unable to climb up the stairs, so after her death, she is known to appear in spirit on the staircase, blocking others from going up. Visitors have reported that they found it difficult or even impossible to get past her and go up the stairs. 
nightmares. Oh, and let's not forget about the spirit of an old man who you can hear whispering nasty and offensive things while you sleep. And if you visit the house, you will be able to hear a baby crying upstairs. But when you go into the nursery, no one is there. That would freak me out. I think I would want to visit this house just to see if I can make it upstairs, but you'll never convince me to sleep there. I mean, I just value my life way too much, and I gotta find out what happens next on Bachelor in Paradise. Yo. Moving into number 7, we have the Battery Point Lighthouse. This is an iconic lighthouse located in Crescent City, California, and it was built back in 1856. There has been numerous reports of strange and creepy occurrences happening there. Lighthouse workers and guests say that they have heard what sounded like someone wearing large boots stomping around. There have also been reports of items moving, cold spots, and the feeling that someone was touching them when no one was even there. Apparently there are three ghosts that haunt this lighthouse because you know one just isn't enough No one seems to know who they are or why they are haunting this place All I know for sure is that we should just board up the place and Just leave it alone. Just forget about it every now and again a visitor will feel someone tapping on their shoulder or Furniture will move by itself. I mean that is definitely not okay and definitely you don't want to be there on a stormy night Bad things are said to happen there when it rains. The Whaley House haunts us in at number 6. This house was built on an old site where the public executions used to occur. So yeah, <laughs> I would say this place is pretty damn haunted. Over the years, many descendants of the Whaley family lived and died in that house, and when the house was being restored, workers and visitors began to notice strange and mysterious sounds, sightings, smells, and encounters. A lot of people reported hearing scary noises and loud footsteps that left footprints. You can actually visit this house and take a tour, but I'd rather not. I'd rather spend my time at Disneyland, you know, where I know it's 100% safe and uh, not too scary, or, or is it? This place is littered with scary ghosts and a lot of unsettling things have happened there. I'm getting the chills just thinking about it, so I gotta move on. Let's move on, let's see what we have next. Well, you know what, the Red House jumps into number five next on our list. This is an old abandoned house that is occupied by a vengeful spirit. Back in the beginning of the 20th century, an engaged couple used to live here. Well, on the night before their wedding, they had a huge fight and the man pushed his fiance down the stairs. She died and he buried her in the backyard. Well, today she has been seen haunting the house and nearby businesses. People have reported that she is wearing her wedding dress that is covered in blood. Is it her own blood? And local legends say that if you step in front of her, she'll rush forward and drag you to her gravesite and you will never be seen again. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be visiting this creepy thing anytime soon or any of these haunted houses on this list. I'm just not brave enough. Like I told you, I hear wind and I run. I see something just a bit bigger than a chihuahua and I run. Okay, the Glen Tavern Inn creeps us in at number four. This house was built in 1911, but don't be fooled by its beautiful exterior. This house has a very ugly past. Back during the Prohibition, they converted the third floor into a speakeasy, brothel, and gambling den. And one of the most infamous rooms is room 307, which is said to be haunted by two ghosts. The amount of paranormal activity here is very high. Visitors said that they saw children running through the halls, and some say that they've seen an angry man and a one-eyed female. There are also reports of the spirits playing the piano in the middle of the night, and others have said that their stuff was stolen. There have also been a lot of deaths that have occurred in this room. A cowboy was shot to death, and a woman was beheaded and left in a closet. So needless to say, this place has a lot of angry and vengeful spirits. Las Coches Adobe makes it onto this list at number three. This might be one of the most terrifying places in California, and you know what's even more terrifying? The fact that I probably pronounced it wrong. This building is located on an old mine site. However, it was covered up because on one horrific day, an accident occurred in the mine and about 30 workers were trapped inside. All of them lost their lives, so it's no wonder that this place is haunted. Locals and visitors have said that they heard the screams of the trapped miners echoing from the property and there are also numerous reports of a lady in black and a male phantom walking around the grounds. Some people have even said that they've seen the ghost of a hanging man from a tree. And then we have the Dark Force, 
Locals say that this force is strong enough to throw you to the ground, and then you can feel heavy footsteps walking on your back, preventing you from getting up. There are a bunch of people who have said that they will never step foot in this place again, and I'm one of them. I don't blame them. Number two, we have the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose. Since it was built in 1884, the mansion is said to be haunted by ghosts who were killed with Winchester rifles. Construction began in 1884 and never stopped until the owner died in 1992. The owner believed that her house was haunted by victims and the only way to keep them quiet was to keep on building. The building was opened by the public in 1923 and the staff and the visitors have reported seeing mischievous spirits who liked to torment them. So yeah, don't be fooled by this beautiful house because it is actually full of ugly surprises and scary ghosts lurking in every corner. Well, for those of you guys who are either brave or really naive, well, you can actually take a tour there and see all of the ghosts and scary paranormal activities for yourself. Alcatraz tops this list at number one. Prisons are often the site of restless spirits and hauntings, and Alcatraz is no exception to that. This prison was the site of violent activities, and it held some of the most dangerous criminals in the world. Alcatraz is actually a breeding ground for the paranormal. One of the most feared prisons on the island is known as The Thing. This creepy spirit has red glowing eyes and it has been recently seen by visitors and also by the prison staff when Alcatraz was in operation. Other common reportings are of creepy voices, sobbing, screaming, and the banging of cell doors. Some have even said that they felt as if they were being touched, felt cold, and they even had an emotional outburst of either sadness or anger just out of nowhere. Starting off at number 10 is the Repeat. This one was shared by Reddit user I am here to say this, who said they lived in an old home for five years. The user's stepdad had known the man who lived in the house before them and also that he had hung himself in the attic. Not really thinking anything of the story, the user just continued on life as usual. But one month into living at the house, he started hearing footsteps in the attic. And it wasn't just once. Like clockwork, every night at 3 a.m., he would hear footsteps pacing around in the attic. The steps were at a normal speed but they were heavy. It kind of sounded like a man was thinking about something. After the footsteps, the user would hear a chair falling on the ground and then absolutely nothing. And I feel like a lot of the time when people hang themselves, they use a chair to stand on and then tie themselves to whatever they need to above and then knock the chair out of reach. So I don't want to say the ghost of this man was redoing his every night, but I'm also not not saying that. And I haven't had breakfast and I woke up late. Coming in at number 9 are the Doppelgangers Part 1. This one's from Reddit user 1LT Obvious, who is sure his family home was haunted by doppelgangers and here's why. He recalled one time as a teenager when he was on MSN with his girlfriend with the webcam on. Do you guys remember the days when you'd like nudge people and play games on MSN? <laughs> Either way, in the view you could see the user, his bedroom door behind him, the stairs going upstairs on the left, and the living room on the right. Now usually his little sister would fall asleep watching TV and then go to bed at some point in the night. At one point while they were messaging, the user saw his sister leave the living room to go upstairs, but she didn't make any sound, which he found really odd. They lived in an old house, so it would creak really loudly every time anyone went anywhere. He went to the living room to check, and his sister was there, still sleeping, so alarm bells started going off. He then goes and sits back down and asks his girlfriend if she saw anything on the camera, and she was like, yeah, I saw your sister go upstairs. But my sister's sleeping on the couch, so who the hell just went upstairs? Do you guys see why I'm always on high alert? What is going on? At number 8 we have the doppelgangers part 2. From the same user he shared another story involving his own ghostly doppelganger. There was an afternoon where his whole family was getting ready to go somewhere and he was already sitting in the car with his mom. They were waiting for his little sister and when she finally got into the car she looked at him and was like what the hell? Confused the user asked her what was wrong and she replied saying she thought he was still inside because before she left she yelled saying we're leaving and she got a reply from him upstairs saying okay I'll be down in a minute. When really he was in the car the whole time. No one else is in the house, yet his voice answered her. <laughs> no, it's after. <laughs> Moving house. <laughs> Lel. 
filling at number seven slot is The Shadow. Now this one comes from Cotton Candy Sweet and Low, who was sure that he had a ghost living in his last house. There were just too many things that took place that couldn't be explained. Full coffee cans would be flung across the kitchen. His mum woke up in the middle of the night because she felt something pulling and pinching her legs. One night the user woke up because some force kept shaking his bed and then he started hysterically crying till it stopped. But the worst thing he described took place one night at 3am. He was downstairs and he saw a shadow on the wall, assuming it was his mum, but when he turned around, no one was there. Then all of a sudden he felt this intense choking feeling and the lights started flickering before going off completely. Meanwhile this guy is getting choked by something and cannot breathe. When the entity finally let him go, he ran to his mum's room and cried under the blankets all night. I would do the same, honestly, I would do the same. Now at number 6 is The Maid. This one comes from Reddit, he's a twig snapper whose uncle's house is located in very east New York. It was supposedly haunted because the family that owned it in the 1800s refused to give it to their stableman and decided to sell it instead. Sad and disappointed, the stableman's spirit stayed at the house as did the maids. Now, the family used to hear furniture being moved around at night but just chalked it up to how old the house was. Naive. Simply naive. However, one weekend the uncle had a friend and her sister stay over and waking up from mid sleep that night, the friend saw the maid bring towels down the stairs. Now she never saw her go back up but a few minutes later she saw the maid bring a percolator downstairs as well. Not thinking much of it and if anything impressed by the hired staff, she went back to sleep. When she woke up and went downstairs, she asked the uncle where the maid went and the uncle was like, what? I don't have a maid. He then asked her what she looked like and then took her to an old portrait in the living room which was of the maid. The friend then said that was the woman she saw and he replied saying she had been dead for over a century. But the grind never ends does it? Coming in at number 5 is the cat hater. You already know I have beef with this one. As a cat lady, this one is just simply not on. Now this one was shared by Reddit user MT Swagger, who said there was some sort of entity in his house that either hated his cats or just liked to tease them. He recalled watching one of his cats walking through the dining area, but then all of a sudden her tail went straight and she was sliding backwards like she was being pulled. The cat was freaking out and meowing and actively trying to run, but she couldn't move. The entity held on for a few more seconds before letting the cat go. You cannot grab an animal by its tail and pull it. It hurts them. You guys, it hurts them. I may not be able to see this ghost entity, but I will call the police on them. I don't even care. At number 4 is the door that never closed. So this one was shared by Redditor iCountFish who said he used to house sit his boss's house whenever he was out of the country. Now this house was a massive, I'm talking 6 bedrooms, 4 bathrooms, the whole 9 yards. The user kind of exclusively lived on the first floor but a month in he started hearing bumps and bangs coming from the second floor. He'd go up to check but would never really find anything and the thing about the second floor was that there were a lot of unfinished areas, one of which was a walk-in closet that was attached to the unlit garage attic. I didn't know you could have a garage in the attic. Either way, one day he went inside to investigate and then locked the door as he left. Two nights later he heard more noises and went up to check to find the door open. Not just unlocked, but open. And this continued to happen, the door would not stay shut or locked no matter what. At one point he even locked it and pushed a bed up against it to find the door unlocked yet again and the bed moved. Like I knew ghosts could move smaller things, but a bed? Damn. Zam Zeddy. Filling at number 3 slot is the college nightmare part 1. So this one's from Munchies on Reddit who said he lived in a haunted house with his friends while he was in college. He had so many stories to share but I tried picking the best ones. One night he woke up at 3am fuming because his roommate's door kept opening and slamming shut. He shouted from his bed telling his roommate to stop before realising he was the only person in the house that weekend. But as soon as he finished yelling, the doors stopped moving as well. Instead, the hippie beads hanging on his own door started swinging swing violently against his door for an hour before stopping. He also shared that anytime anything strange happened around the house, it would start smelling like this strong, flowery, old lady sort of perfume. So I'm guessing the entity haunting them was an old woman. From the days of yore. What does that even mean? The days of yore. I don't know, I heard it. I used it. Now at number 2 is the college nightmare part 2. Now another really odd thing with this college house was the fact that it had a door built into the floor that led to the basement. But it was always hidden by a carpet so no one else other than the tenants knew it was there. However things in the house would continuously go missing and wind up in the basement in the coal chute down there. On another occasion one of the roommates was playing video games at night when he saw a visible cloud of mist travel from the kitchen into the bathroom then disappear into the basement door. Another night the last 
whilst your mate up was locking the doors and closing the lights before going to bed. As he was walking, he heard someone breathe into his ear and initially he thought it was one of the roommates but they were all asleep. He turned around, saw no one there, shat himself and then ran to his room. And finally at number one is the previous owner. This one comes from the toenail collector on reddit and I honestly hope you do not collect your toenails. I'm gagging. Either way, he shared that as a teen he lived in an old farmhouse that his family were remodeling. One day he was working under his truck while only being supported by a jack, which I feel like is pretty dumb. Either way, midway he really had no reason to get out from underneath, but all of a sudden he felt this overwhelming urge to get out. So he did, and less than two seconds later the jack slipped and the truck fell to the ground. Now had he been under there, he would have straight up died. So he ended up telling his parents about it later on that day, and his mum started sobbing saying the previous owner had died under a vehicle in the exact same spot. The family would also see moving shadows around the house and music coming from upstairs despite no one playing it. One morning his mum was making breakfast and she went to get something from a cabinet and when she turned around all the forks were stabbed into the table and then bent like right angles. Like to know what's going on there. We're just gonna sweep it under the rug. Okay, I guess so. We're starting off the list with booby traps. When Matt Feeney bought an old home in Denver, Colorado, he ended up making a pretty startling discovery. While renovating, Matt smelled what seemed to be matches being lit. He had been knocking down some of the walls and found a series of matches placed one after the other, forming kind of a fuse. The new homeowner soon discovered that the first owners of the home are the Small Doan family, a notorious crime family that was pretty infamous in the Colorado area. He also found a hidden chamber in the basement, which led to a small dugout room where many believe the crime family hid things. As to what those things were, we can only guess, but Probably nothing good. Number nine, under the stairs. A couple years ago, a redditor by the name of Perspicum posted a photo with a caption reading, the new house my parents bought has a secret room under the stairs. As cool as this is, I would probably arm myself before going down there, but yes, I definitely would. This image really invokes a lot of creepy images in my head though. Anytime there's a hidden room, there's two obvious questions that come to all our minds. One, what's down there? Of course, that's a pretty obvious one. And two, why would this room be hidden? As soon as I saw this image, I was immediately reminded of the Wes Craven movie, The People Under the Stairs. Creepy movie, creepy picture. Uh, scares all around. Mold. In 2005, Jason and Carrie Brown purchased a new home, and as they were doing renovations, they discovered a room behind a bookshelf that was kind of built into the wall and actually swung out, kind of like a door. They never knew this room existed, and inside of it they found a note that read, hey, if you're reading this, then you found the secret room. The letter was written by the previous homeowner who went on to explain that they had moved out of the house to, due to having a mold problem and that had made their children actually sick, forcing them to move out. Of course, the new owners were pretty alarmed and ended up suing the real estate agent who sold them the home, which was definitely warranted, but I gotta say, kind of not cool for the previous owner to hide information like that in a secret room. What if they never found it? Why play games like that? You know what I'd do in this situation? I'd write that same letter and then I'd just send it in the mail. That way I'd know they'd get it instead of being like, no, they must, they must find the secret room behind the magic bookshelf in order to protect themselves from the poisonous mold. What is this guy? Like what is he? Is it the, the Riddler or something? Just tell them that information. It's not the kind of thing you want to hide. Anyway, number seven. In a series of videos originally shared on TikTok, a young couple had just purchased a 130 year old home before receiving a letter written by someone who had grown up in the home, referring to themselves as the last surviving member of the Madison family. The letter detailed a series of hidden rooms and compartments all throughout the house, which the couple started going on a scavenger hunt to find. Just imagine how fun that would be. First of all, just buying a house would be great, right? Then discovering you have a bunch of secret rooms all over the place, sign me up. Anyway, the couple found a cabinet with a bunch of vintage liquor bottles, still full mind you. There was a hidden space behind some panels in the bathroom. There had also been some antique furniture left behind, including a music box that played a decidedly eerie tune. Definitely the type of house that would be haunted if that's the sort of thing you believe in. Not something I really 
believe in myself, but uh, I'd probably be a little freaked out roaming around that house uh, alone at night. It kind of looks like the house uh, from uh, Hellraiser a little bit. A couple had just purchased a home in Logan, Utah. One day, they made a pretty eerie discovery. The mother had tried to move a bookcase, but discovered it was secured on. When she finally managed to move it though, it revealed a room that hadn't been mentioned in the listing for the home. I don't know why all these secret rooms are hidden behind bookshelves, but apparently that's the deal. It was this dingy room with nothing but a, a fold out chair and ladder sitting in the middle and various objects that I can't quite make out, but it, it definitely doesn't look like a very friendly place. A lot of people have stated this kind of looked like maybe a torture room. I'd be pretty stoked to find out if there was an extra room in my house even if it was a torture room, especially if I just bought the house, I'd be feeling like I got a bit of a deal. Even if there were some you know, missing folks in the neighborhood that met their end in said room, gotta make the best of everything in life, right? I'd, I'd make good use of it. Throw out the old chair, first of all, just get rid of anything in that room. Who knows who sat on that thing? And then uh, put up some lights in there, have a hidden party room or something. Number five, stroller. Five years ago, a Redditor named JK Main shared a photo of what they saw when they opened up their attic for the first time, simply writing, I should never have opened the attic. All you see is a dark, cramped attic space with nothing but this lonely old stroller. So sure, this is what happened. Someone had a stroller, baby grew up, they didn't need it anymore, into the attic it goes. The stroller, not the baby, but. Then again, we uh, don't have any more pictures, so maybe there was a little skeleton in that stroller. We'll never, we'll never know. There's something about attics and basements that just creeps us all out though, doesn't it? And it's hard not to look at this image without feeling a little pang of uneasiness. It's an old timey looking stroller too that really reminds me of something you'd see in an old gothic horror movie or something. And you also can't help but wonder what is in that stroller. Probably nothing, but I mean, eh, you know, you never know. Imagine seeing this in your attic and then one night you're lying in bed and you hear the sound of squeaky wheels slowly rolling about above the ceiling accompanied by the faint sound of a child's laughter. Number four, bunker bugs. A Redditor by the name of Colombian Thunder posted an image captioned, found out the house we are living in has a bunker below. I managed to squeeze my phone in one of the cracks of the door to take this creepy picture. And this is what his phone captured. So yeah, pretty vomit inducing. This picture is just a, a nice reminder that despite how critter free we try to make our living spaces as much as we try to forget that they even exist. It's all just an illusion, baby. There are thousands and thousands of insects all around us at all times. Just too many insects and we all know it. We just don't like thinking about it. Imagine going to bed at night knowing all these crickets are scuttling around under you. I actually kind of like crickets generally. I think they're oddly cute in a way, but these look like a, like a different kind of cricket. They almost look like a, a cross between a spider and a cricket. Let me know in the comments. I'm sure some, some bug or insect fanatic knows exactly what these are, but just the sheer amount of them too. I mean, just stare at this image and try not to squirm a little bit. You can almost feel them crawling under your skin. Number three, the bed. This next story comes to us from Steven and Carolyn Sparks, who found a secret room behind the bathroom wall in the basement of their recently purchased home in East Sussex. And it looks like a, it looks like a room you'd, you'd see in a Saw movie. It's terrifying, just real nasty looking. In this dingy room, they discovered nothing but a pile of boxes in the corner and this incredibly uh, comfortable looking iron bed frame. What a, what a cozy looking room. It must've been nice for Steven to know. He got into a bad argument with his wife one night. He could just pop down to the basement and curl up there for the night. The bed takes up a, the whole width of the room, so it does not look comfortable at all. I was being sarcastic in case you didn't realize. This would be uh, just a claustrophobic nightmare as to what went on in this room. Who knows? Like I said, the, the room was hidden behind the wall eh, in their basement bathroom, so I don't know. I, I don't think anything was good happening back there. I'm imagining someone uh, was in that room who didn't want to be, though, because look at it. Who in their right mind would want to be there? T t duct tape as many Pixar movie posters and there as you want. Try and make it as friendly and inviting as possible. This place still looks like a scene at a hostel. So moving on. Number two, Ohio. Oh boy, 
Yeah, this one comes to us from Ohio, the land of the strange. Students of Ohio State University renting a home just off campus had started joking around with each other that there was a ghost in their home when they began discovering some of their cupboards and even their microwave and oven were being left open. One day they decided to explore their basement where they happened to cross a locked door, a door which they had believed led to a simple utility closet. But once they opened it, they discovered something much worse than junk. It was a room full of someone's stuff. A surprise roommate, if you will, which is never a pleasant surprise. I think most of us like knowing exactly how many and who our roommates are, but that's just me, maybe. Found framed photos, textbooks, a bed, whole nine yards. A guy was living there. Apparently he didn't turn out to be dangerous, but uh, it looks to me like he didn't turn out to be all that smart either. If you're, if you're gonna be squatting in someone else's home, take notes here. Maybe, and this is just my opinion, but you might wanna close the cupboards when you're done rooting through them. And the microwave too, you can't even close the microwave? Are you an animal? Yeah, anyway, it just helps prevent suspicion when you leave things the way you found them, you know? And coming in at number one is Crawl Space. In 2014, a fellow on Reddit going by the name of Lumberjack found a mysterious crawl space in the basement of his new home, which contained some pretty harrowing stuff. It all started when he found a movable panel in his basement. When he opened it up, he found a crawl space, and in that crawl space was a black door sealed with a combination lock. One of the strangest things about this door was that it had an air vent on it, as if it had been made to keep someone trapped inside. When Lumberjack finally managed to get the lock open, he discovered a small soundproof room lined with plastic sheeting. He also found a briefcase and a safe. Inside of the safe, he found several VHS tapes. A message was also written on the inside lid of the safe that simply read, do not. That was it. Lumberjack went to the police with all of this and was apparently told to take down the pictures he shared on Reddit. We also don't know what was on those tapes till this very day, and maybe it's better that we don't. Mm -hmm.